I'm joined now by South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. Um, thank you. I know you have to go at 2.30, and you stuck around for me, and I appreciate that because we could use your expertise on a couple of issues. On the first one, as a former prosecutor, what do you think is really needed that the Congress needs to pass in order to meet the standards of what Rod Rosenstein was just describing to the president from a law enforcement angle? Well, you have to have two types of security. You have to have border security and you have to have internal security and you have to have a mechanism by which to remove people um, who are not law abiding uh, in an expeditious way. So I, I would point out to you this Supreme Court case Zavadas, which is impossible for normal people to understand how if your home country won't take you back, we're going to release you back on the streets in the United States, no matter what underlying crime you committed. That is impossible for reasonable people, including some like me who aren't that reasonable. It's impossible for us to understand how someone who just committed a heinous act, served their time, won't be sent back to their country of origin. So right. you have to have security as the preeminent fu function of government. Tomorrow, I know that you're going to join Chairman Devin Nunes from the House Intel Committee for this briefing about the FBI informant issue. Take a listen to what President Trump had to say about that earlier today. This supersedes Republicans and Democrats. So what I want from Rod, from the FBI, from everybody, we want transparency. And you know what? I think in their own way, they are obstructionists, but even the Democrats, I really believe, on this issue, it supersedes. I think they want transparency, too. Um, Congressman Trey, uh, I'm sorry, Congressman Trey Gowdy, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, the leading Democrats, they have sent out a letter to the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, who we just saw addressing the president on this MS-13 conference, and to the FBI director, saying that they believe that this briefing that's going to be held tomorrow should be done in a bipartisan fashion with the Gang of Eight. Would you have any objection to that? I don't care who comes. Uh, I'm not in control of the invite list. The only thing I would ask, Dana, is if you're going to show up, show up with an open mind and close lips. In other words, don't mm -hmm. leak uh, like a sieve when we get through with the meeting. And, and the importance of an open mind, you got to keep in mind, Dana, 60 of my House colleagues have already voted to move forward with impeachment on President Trump before the very first finding by Bob mm -hmm. Mueller. Brennan wants him in the dustpin of history. Comey says impeachment is too good of a remedy for him. Loretta Lynch wanted it called a matter and not an investigation. I mean, the, the, those are the folks that, that, that don't have an open mind. So if there's a Democrat who is serious about figuring out what our law enforcement agencies did in 2016, and importantly, the basis, the factual predicate mm -hmm. that led to whatever investigatory decisions were made, I'm happy to have them in the room, but it's not my meeting, and I don't, I don't publish the invite list. It's, it's good sometimes not to be in charge of the invite list. Congressman Trey Gowdy. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, we're still keeping.